Welcome to Prejim Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 23, Polymorphism in C Sharp. In this session, we will learn overriding virtual methods and polymorphism. Let's look at an example. In part 21, we have seen inheritance. In that session, we have learned that a base class reference variable can point to a child class object. This concept actually forms the basis for polymorphism. If you haven't already watched my video on inheritance, I would strongly encourage you to do so before continuing with this session. Alright, so in this example, I have already written a simple class called employee, which has got two properties, first name, last name, and uh, an, or a method, print full name, which will basically concatenate first and last name and print the full name. Now let's say we have three different type of employees in our organization, you know, part-time employees, full-time employees, and temporary employees. Okay, obviously any type of employee will have the first name, last name, and we should be capable of printing their full name. So all this code is common to every employee. So we have that in the base class. Now let's go ahead and create the respective child classes. First, maybe um, part-time employee public class part time employee so this class inherits from the employee base class similarly we will have you know maybe full time employee which also inherits from employee class and similarly we will have temporary employee as well temporary employee so if you look at the example so far it's pretty simple I have an employee base class part-time employee full-time employee temporary time uh, temporary employee all of them inherits from the employee base class now let's say now from inheritance we know that all of these code will be available even to the child class. So if I create a part-time employee object, print full name method will be available to this part-time employee, full-time employee, and temporary employee. Okay, now let's say in my main method, I want to create an array of employees, you know. So let's call this employees is equal to new array of employees. Okay, and I want to be able to create four different types of employees. Now, since this is an array, in the first element of this array, I want to create, you know, the type of the object is employee. Okay, and then maybe in the second one, employees of one is equal to new part-time employee. Now, is this possible? Absolutely. In the inheritance session, we have seen that a base class reference variable, now this employees is just a reference variable, so a base class reference variable can point to, you know, a child class object. Based on that concept, we can assign a child class object to a base class reference variable because a child class is a specialization of its base class, meaning a child class has all the capabilities of its base class, plus whatever are the additional you know, features that the child class has. Similarly, employees of two is equal to new full-time employee, and similarly, employees of three is equal to new temporary employee. So now all we have done is we have created an array of employees and then to each element we have allocated, assigned a different type of employee object. Since these classes are all related by inheritance to the parent class reference variable, you can assign you know, the respective child class objects without any issues. Now let's say if I use an array to loop through each employee object, so for each employee, maybe E in employees array, because if you remember, you know, though this is a child class object, 
since this class these classes are inheriting from the employee class you know all the code that is present in the employee class is available to the respective classes so that fact allows us to you know assign a child class object to a parent class reference variable and also allows us to invoke any of the parent class method so in the parent class employee we have print full name so i'm going ahead and printing that now look at this the respective child classes doesn't have print full name method okay so obviously the parent class has it and that will be invoked so let's go ahead and run this program and remember in the employees array we have four different type of employee objects so if i go ahead and run this as you might expect you know the print full name is called for each object and since the child objects doesn't have their own version of print full name the parent version is called which prints just the first name and last name because they are initialized to their first name and last name now let's say I have a requirement my manager said okay that's fine we are able to print a part-time employee full-time employee temporary employees first and last names but what I want is along with their first and last names if he's a part-time employee I want you know an indicator uh, a visual indicator like hyphen part-time and if he's a full-time you know the output should be as shown in this notepad okay so how do we do that okay that's when we will actually have you know the respective um, in the respective class we will have a print full name method as well now if I go ahead and implement that for part-time employee so for part-time all we have to do is all right to the first and last name I want to concatenate part-time string just like that similarly for the full-time employee and for temporary employee and this is going to be full-time and this is going to be temporary okay so now each class has its has got its own uh, you know specialized specialized method or overridden method but now what happens is if you have the same in the child class I'm having a method name which is very much similar to the parent class now if we do that do that in the last session difference between method you know in the last session when we spoke about inheritance we have seen that it will actually hide the method in method hiding session we have seen that so if the method in the child class has the same name and same signature as the method in the parent class this literally hides the method in the base class okay but now since we are using a base class reference variable even though you have a specialized version in the in the child class the base class you know method will be called so if you look at this if I go ahead and run this you will actually look no difference in the uh, output and if you look at we'll get three warning messages one for each specialization you know one for each derived class so for part-time employees and full-time employee and what this basically is saying is you know this print full name method is hiding the method that is present in the base class because they have same name and signature and if you're hiding is intentional then use a new keyword that's what this message this warning message is saying so if I want to really hide that I can use a new keyword but but that's not our intention our intention is basically to override the definition that is provided by the base class and to do that you have to use the override keyword but before we do that we have to mark the method in the parent class as virtual and I'll, and I'll tell you the reason why you have to do that you know, the moment you mark a method as virtual in your parent class it basically indicates to the derived class any derived class can override the method you know the virtual method if the derived class wish to do so okay otherwise they can leave that if they don't override then the base virtual implementation will be available to the derived class so basically what I, I can do is look at this 
if I just delete this implementation and if I type just override and then if I press space look at that the IntelliSense shows me there is a method called print full name which can be overridden and if I just select that automatically the signature method will be inherited okay so public override void print full name and what do we want to do uh, since this is a part-time employee we want to print the first last name along with this hyphen part-time part you know string literal similarly instead of void we want to I'm sorry instead of override I mean we have to use the override keyword here and for the temporary employee as well so what what changes have we done until now in the base class we mark the method as virtual and in the respective derived classes we are overriding the implementation so if we go ahead and run this program now though the reference variable is of type parent at runtime you know the runtime actually checks okay what kind of object do I have if it is a part-time employee and somebody is calling the print full name then I want to invoke the overridden print full name method in that respective child class which will make these respective overridden methods in the respective classes to be invoked okay at runtime and that's nothing but a polymorphism okay polymorphism basically enables you to invoke derived class methods through base class reference variable at runtime that's nothing but polymorphism so if i go ahead and run that we will get the output as we have expected so first name last name and for part-time employee we should get part-time full-time and temporary but on the other hand look at that for example let's say for a temporary employee I am not providing any implementation I am not overriding the method in the base class if I do that then what happens is since this temporary employee object doesn't have any overridden met method the base class you know virtual method implementation will be used for this last employee so if we go ahead and run that since part-time and full-time employee classes has the overridden methods the respective overridden methods will be invoked whereas for the temporary employee we don't have the overridden method so the base class virtual method implementation will be used and similarly for the first employee it's the employee object the base class type itself so the virtual implementation will be used so this is nothing but polymorphism so if somebody asks you what is polymorphism you know you can just say that in one very good statement polymorphism enables us okay to invoke derived class methods using a base class reference variable at runtime that's polymorphism okay so let's go back to the slides so polymorphism is one of the primary pillars of object-oriented programming polymorphism allows you to invoke derived class methods through a base class reference during runtime in a base class the method is declared virtual and in the derived class we override that method and this virtual keyword in the base class indicates that it can be overridden by any derived class and on this slide you can see additional resources for ASP.NET and C-Sharp interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.